Mostly in Peyton. Good morning, Chelsea. Good morning. Hi, Wesley. <laughs> hi, uh, hi, Anna. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Uh, Angie is not on today. Morning, Kara. Morning, Don. Uh, Joe. Yeah, no, Angie won't be here today. No. Morning, Gina. Okay. Morning. <laughs> oh, Gina. All right, Don. I think we're ready to go. Good. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone on YouTube and here on Zoom. Uh, welcome to church, everybody, sisters and brothers. We're so happy you're joining us today to worship God together from wherever your IP address is. Uh, we're praying that one day soon that an IP address will be one option we can choose to worship with each other with and not the only way. And I know that the reopening team will uh, is working actually hard towards organizing that Sunday when we can start in-person worship services again soon. Um, speaking of which, do you guys remember the last time you guys were physically at church? It's been so long for most of us, hasn't it? And I happened to ride over the other evening and the parking lot was empty and the building doors were locked. And uh, I, I went to the main door and I looked inside, feeling a little bit like a stalker for sure, but but man, it, it actually felt so nice to be under that cross that stands on the roof of our main foyer. So here's hoping that we'll be walking into church again soon, friends, and under that cross. And uh, and when we do come in, take a, take a moment to take a look at that cross. Amen? So on to worship. Uh, we ask that you please keep your mics off, but your cameras on, so we can experience worship together with you guys a bit more. All right, so... Uh, today's call to worship. Today's call to worship is found in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 25. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him and to the soul who seeks him. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Heavenly Father, may our souls always seek you out because time and time again you have shown us that you are good and merciful and steadfast and faithful, just as it's written here in our call to worship. May we be renewed this morning with your love and may we wholeheartedly show you our love to you through this worship. And may it sustain us in the coming week ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Good morning, church. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. And I like what Hamid said. Uh, it would be an amazing day. And it will be a beautiful Sunday when we can actually uh, go back to the place of worship together and worship our Lord uh, together in one voice. Uh, but this time, let's give our hearts and offerings and our praise to the Lord, um, who is always there for us, who always mighty in strength, and who is always be praised all of our days. Let's praise. Say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord, mighty strength. You are faithful, you will ever be. We will praise you all of our days. It's for your glory, we offer everything. 
Raise your hands, all your nations Shout to God, all creation How awesome is the Lord Most High Will you send us? Will you send us? God, we will go You're the answer We want the world to know we will trust you when you call our name when you lead us we'll follow all the way raise your hands all your nations shout to god all creation how awesome is the lord most high we will pray you together for now and forever how awesome is the Lord most high sing hallelujah 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 how awesome is the Lord most high Raise your hands, all your nations, shout to God, all creation, how awesome is the Lord Most High. We will praise you together, for now and forever, how awesome is the Lord Most High. Raise your hands, all your nations, shout to God, all creation, how awesome is the Lord Most High. We will praise you together, for now and forever, how awesome is the Lord Most High. Lord Most High Lord Most High Amen Church, as we sing uh, the next song, uh, just take a moment to think about the cross and think about how the Lord has traded His heart for our sin. And the promise that we shouldn't forget It's always good for us to live our life in the remembrance. Let's sing together. I take the bread of life. I take the bread of life. Broken for sin your body crucified to make me whole again I will recall the call pour out in sacrifice i 
character is one of pure love, which you repeatedly and unceasingly show us in so many ways. We are blessed by it, covered by it, and we should know how to express it in our own small way to those around us. But Father, forgive us because it turns out we don't know how to show it very well. Whether it's as the historical church coming face to face with the horrible truth of its participation in acts of violence and cruelty against our sisters and brothers of the First Nations, or whether it's just as us as individuals, we have this opportunity here to reflect and repent for any of our sins and serious roadblocks we have made or put up against you and those we, have, we may have hurt. 
does not keep our backs to him, but turn around and confess our sins to the Lord, who is ever faithful and always willing to forgive. With great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead through our sin. By grace, we have been saved. And the whole church said, thanks be to God. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, and welcome again to our worship service for this Sunday, June 28th. My goodness, this means we're practically halfway through 2021. Crazy, eh? Uh, we're just going to take the next few minutes to go through some announcements, but please take this moment and greet one another. Send a text, a wave, or friendly comment in the chat box to each other. Show someone you haven't seen, which is pretty much all of us here, a little bit of VCC love and affection, if you could. And it's really great to be worshiping with you guys. Um, okay, and now, sorry, we're going to be going to our announcements. <laughs> uh, I'm not good at juggling uh, apps, it seems. Sorry about that. So, okay, next announcement. Uh, well, we've got our online worship. Well, surprise, surprise. Sunday worship is still on Zoom and YouTube. So even as the province is slowly opening up during the summer, we'll continue for the time being to stay online for service, okay? So keep reaching out, check in with each other. No text or call is unappreciated. So every single one of us needs it. So let's keep on keeping on virtually um, until we can keep on keeping on in person anyway. Uh, then you can do both. Uh, we will go on to the next one, uh, get connected and or stay connected with us and each other. Uh, maybe you're a newcomer, or maybe you've been around forever, or maybe you're someone who's in between, but you haven't really been connected or been connecting with each other, with others here at VCCEM. And if this is you, uh, check out the link that'll pop into the chat for what next steps you could take or we could help you take. Uh, it's better, they say, together. So, yeah, let's do this together. Um, prayer. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that we need it. And if you're anything like me, you need to do more than we're probably doing currently. And if there's, and there's no shortage of reasons to do it these days, is there? We can literally close our eyes and point anywhere, and there'll be something or someone we could or should pray for. So let's pray for the First Nations community who are deeply hurting these days, for those seriously affected by COVID, for the Dali family, for Pastor Angie and her time away from us. I know I miss her right about now. Uh, prayer is good for us all, and so I encourage you to keep doing it. And if you're looking for prayer, send in your prayer requests at vccem.com forward slash prayer, and someone will reach out to you to pray with you and for you. Uh, giving and receiving. Thank you, as always, for faithfully giving offering, guys. Uh, I want to encourage you to keep generosity and giving as part of your worship habit. And our offering and donation links are vccem.com forward slash offering or e-transfer uh, or you can e-transfer at uh, give at vccem.com. Uh, we have July community shout outs, not today because it's not July yet, but um, July is next week. And if you have a birthday or anniversary or wedding or a Freedom 55 retirement, ha, I wish, uh, then you then you owe it to yourself to send in a picture and boomerang video of yourself to the shadow teams, um, which at the moment is me. So send me your pic and boomerang by Tuesday of this week. Okay, and uh, and we'll see you on the video. Discipleship. So what is it? Jesus commands us to do it. Who does it? Everyone is supposed to do it. And how do we do it? Uh, go to vccem.com forward slash discipleship and we can figure that part out together. Uh, we have a super short online survey right now that we need as many people as possible to fill out. 
and I'm appealing to any member who hasn't filled it out yet. So we already got a fantastic response of over 35 people who have responded, thank you very much. Uh, but just an FYI, most of the respondents came from the millennial single and career group. Uh, Gen X, my people, young families, old families, CM and uh, boomers, okay boomer, we're severely underrepresented here. So please, please take a moment to fill out that survey, okay? Um, also a heads up that members of the discipleship team will also be reaching out to some random people, uh, sorry, random members of the congregation that is, for more in-depth interviews and insights. Okay, so we are celebrating our CM graduates. Congratulations. So let's congratulate and celebrate our grads for being such bosses and finishing up their studies at this stage uh, of their life, despite all the hurdles and difficulties going on in the world these days. Uh, being a student is difficult enough without a global pandemic happening in the background. So uh, we want to celebrate their achievements as a church family, beginning with this short video. All right, all right, all right. Um, can we take a moment uh, here and recognize these amazing grads again? Um, and I'd like to call up actually Alice Min, uh, Matthew Wan, Charles Troy, Nuri Lee, uh, and uh, David Juhan Kim, Timothy Cho, Daniel Kim, Eugene Park. Eugene Park? Great, hey guys. Um, can we give them a round of applause again, please? They've collectively showed how we could be. And right now they've actually uh, shared with us a slide that they would like, uh, that they've collectively shared how we can be praying for them. So let me grab that and pull that up. This is it right here. Um, I don't know whether you can read them, but we can go over them very quickly. There are three things that they asked for. One is for Thanksgiving, um, uh, for the family, friends, communities, and support systems that have gotten them through this very strange year and to the end of their degrees, God be praised. We celebrate this achievement with them for sure. Um, and guidance, number two, direction and peace. Some of the new grads know that they'll be doing next year, but are unsure what that looks like given the pandemic. And some are still not sure what lies ahead. So please pray that no matter where they might be, or find themselves, they would remember that God goes with them and will continue to give them a hope and a future as they move forward. Uh, and three, continual reliance on God. Uh, it can be comforting to turn things to things that are not God when we are feeling uncertain about our futures, but please pray that our new grads would turn to scripture and pray for wisdom, that their relationship with God would deepen as they continue forward beyond this chapter of their lives. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, turn over the mic to Pastor Joe, who will lead us in uh, a little bit of a blessing prayer for these, uh, these well-deserved guys. Congrats again, guys. 
Congratulations. Uh, yeah, once again, from your church family to all of you on screen and uh, those of you who uh, couldn't make it to service today, um, we want you to know how proud we are of you. It really is uh, an achievement uh, through a pandemic to finish well. And so blessings on your transitions. We're going to take a moment just to pray uh, for you and your next steps. So if you, church, if we could just join hearts in prayer as we lift up um, prayers for our new graduates. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you, and indeed there is nothing that we can do apart from you, and so thank you, God, that we stand here today, and we look at how you have brought um, these amazing young people, Alice, Matthew, Charles, Nuri, David, Timothy, Daniel, Eugene, Sejin, all to this point. We thank you for your faithfulness, your great care, surrounding them with people who will support and encourage them all along the way. We know we have done nothing on our own, but always through your great love and mercy and care. So thank you, God, that we can, um, yeah, be celebrating together this day. And so for a faithful past, God, we say thank you. And for the unknown future, we trust you. Um, for the steps uh, and the paths yet to be discerned, God, would you give um, these, uh, these young men and women um, a sureness of your good plan for each and every one of them. May you, would you give them a calling that shows them that how they are part of your body, uh, working for your kingdom and all that they do through word and deed, Lord. We ask not just for uh, opportunities or jobs or program acceptance, but God, would you bless them with purpose and vision for what you can do in them, through them and around them. God, and just as you have brought them to this moment, surrounded with a cloud of witnesses, uh, people who love them, God, may they take these next steps forward, always together with you, uh, with brothers and sisters who have their eyes set on you as well. May we mutually encourage and love each other unto uh, glorifying your name uh, everywhere we go in everything we do. So Lord, thank you so much that we can celebrate this wonderful moment and, and, and the life of these young people and the life of our church. We praise you for all the good you have done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for coming on screen. Blessings on the next steps. Uh, we're gonna continue our worship uh, through congregational prayer by Jian Park and scripture reading from uh, Matthew 1. So let's continue to worship the Lord. Uh, good morning, church. It's great to be worshiping with you all this, uh, this morning, whether you're at home or camping. I hope that you guys are all safe and enjoying your summer. Um, and let us bow our heads in prayer. Good and gracious Father, thank you for the gift of another day. Thank you that we are able to freely gather once again to worship you and to walk together in faith. Thank you for the grace you have given us that despite the fact that we are sinners, you sent your one and only son, Jesus Christ, to carry our burdens for us and to ultimately show us a love like no other. May we continue to live following the ways of Jesus so that we may be the salt and light of the world. As we enter into stage two of reopening, may you continue to keep us safe and guide us as we exercise a new level of freedom. We pray for healing and restoration of families who have been severely affected by the coronavirus, whether it is physically, financially, spiritually, or mentally. We lift up a prayer, a special prayer for Pastor Angie, who is currently taking a leave of absence. May she find good health and wellness during this period of rest, and may she know how closely you're watching over her. May the church be well equipped this summer to continue doing the work of your kingdom. Finally, we pray for the overwhelming number of indigenous children who died in Canadian residential schools as well as the grief-stricken Indigenous families and communities of Canada. We pray for the healing and continued awareness of the pain and sufferings of their past as our country makes renewed efforts toward reconciliation. Now, as we hear your word, fill us with your spirit. Soften our hearts that we may delight in your presence. Sharpen our minds that we may discern your truth. Shape our wills that we may desire your ways. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, today's scripture is from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that her power that his power had gone and got, gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, what happened to her, uh, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Uh, Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother to teach her anymore? Overhearing what they had said, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, just believe. Do not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, indeed, indeed. Well, hey, well, good morning, everyone. It's so good to be in worship with you today. Uh, to see many of you on screen, thank you for turning on your cameras earlier in service. It was a huge encouragement. I am in an empty sanctuary, everyone. It is incredibly sad. I miss you so much right now. But uh, I'm glad to be worshiping with you, that we can be gathered um, as we take a moment right now to, yeah, lift up our hearts. And like Chian said, that our hearts would be so soft uh, and ready to receive uh, what God has to hear. Uh, say to us this morning. Uh, friends on YouTube, uh, again, just always want to remember that uh, we're with you as well. We see you, kind of, and we know that uh, we're worshiping with one heart. And so, church, um, what a blessing it is uh, to turn to God's word now. Now, uh, in uh, a few weeks ago, I talked about how this is uh, in the liturgical season, this is called ordinary time. And the emphasis of ordinary time is simply walking with Jesus and seeing how what he might have to say to us as we journey through just these normal days that we go through. How is he calling us into discipleship? What does he want us to see and to do because we are his disciples? Now today, uh, we come to this really long passage. Matthew, you did a great job uh, reading the word for us today. Uh, stories of miracles, two miracle accounts of uh, incredible healing and restoration and resurrection as well. Now, the problem with miracles is that we have no control over it. We prefer control. We have no control. And God is going to do what God will do in his good ways and good timing. But with miracles, it's hard to kind of see like, yeah, that's how it's going to be. But I think there are, um, as I've been spending time with this passage, something that really has caught my eye is just the physicality of this passage, everything that's happening. Um, there's, you know, any, any story, there's always going to be some sort of movement. But what has caught me, caught my eye certainly today, is just the way, the, the posture of people as they are with Jesus. 
And so, um, namely, hands and knees. Uh, it's a huge part of our story today, and I think it's actually a really important part of our discipleship. And so let's kind of unpack this and see what our passage has for us um, to, to shape us as Jesus's disciples in the world today. So uh, first, uh, maybe just a little bit of good news. As we look at this passage, what we see is a Jesus. We notice Jesus who hears the prayer of all. You know, there are two, two um, relationships and conversations happening here. Uh, between Jesus and Jairus, the synagogue leader. He's the one who has all the status. He has social location. He's got power. He's probably got resources, money, connections. He's got it all. And he hears, and Jesus hears his prayer. And Jesus also hears the prayer of this woman who in all of her attempts to uh, find care and help for her condition, she has, it's resulted in her having nothing, no money and no health. She's got no power and she has um, very little control. And yet we see Jesus um, hearing their prayers and responding to their prayers. Whether they are people of great means or resources or status or someone who has just been like beat down, they are both on their knees and Jesus hears their prayers. And this is such good news for us because in life, we know that we are going to all face things that will drive us to our knees, you know, figuratively, if uh, we, we know what it is to feel like, oh man, I feel like in life right now, I'm on my knees. If you've ever had a loved one who's become sick or hurt um, or they're in, uh, they're in distress, that will drive you to your knees. The sense of like, I don't know what to do. And then I need great help. I need help. Uh, for all of us who've experienced disappointments or, you know, crushing pressure from school or from work, living through a pandemic can find you on your knees figuratively. Uh, maybe you've had bad breaks, breakups, and that could drive you to your knees as well. And just feeling like, I need some help. God, I don't know what to do. I need some help. It's that feeling of just being so overmatched and weak. What else can I do? And to find ourselves in that place where we are feeling weak or vulnerable or fearful or alone, maybe exposed um, and looking within ourselves honestly, just finding ourselves feeling um, helpless uh, or inadequate, contingent and dependent on others and on God. It's a really tough place to be. We know, we know it's actually a good place to be, but it's a tough place to be. Everything in our, uh, in our culture tells us that we need to be people who, if you get down, what do you do? You get back up. And how fast do you do it? As soon as possible, right? You bounce back up, right? Um, I don't know if you remember, actually, you probably won't. It's the worst Rocky movie of all the Rocky movies, right? But Rocky V is actually one of my favorite movies because of this uh, speech that he has with his son who's kind of grown up and he says, kid, I don't know what, what went wrong, but at some point in life, you started feeling sorry for yourself. And Rocky goes on to say like, the way you win in life is you're gonna get knocked down, but then you get back up. That's what winning is, getting back up. And whether that's in sports or in schools, we might hear this narrative in our families and with our friends, like get back up, bounce back up. This is what we wanna do. This is kind of what we're taught to do. But as we look at this passage, uh, in the Gospel of Mark today, what we're reminded of, I think it's really important to see, is for the disciples of Jesus, we need to be people who know, yes, as much as we want to get back up, because there's people to love and things to do, before we bounce back up, if we find ourselves on our knees, the disciples of Jesus need to be people who learn to pray when they're on their knees. We need to be people who know what it is to find ourselves on our knees in life and then knowing the very best thing that we can do. It might not seem efficient or even effective, but what we're being taught, I think, in this passage especially is when you are on your knees, we are called to pray. I think I might be like a lot of you here today. We're here to worship, and sometimes prayer instead of the first thing, it can almost become the second thing or the third thing, or sometimes the last thing or the emergency, like I'm falling out of the plane and I need a parachute, pray, right? Like sometimes that's what prayer becomes. 
But the disciples of Jesus are people who are called to be people when we find ourselves on our knees in life, more than strength in that moment, we're called to pray. Um, this is, uh, you know, we've talked about James Tissot, uh, the last little bit. I don't know if it comes out too clear. This is his rendering of the scene of the woman um, just reaching out and trying to touch the garment of Christ for healing. And she's down there in the middle, the middle uh, center. And she's just reaching for the tassels of his cloak down on the ground. She's not even standing up like the rest of the crowd. She's down on the ground, like just trying to be as small and as hidden as possible. But she's there reaching out for the Lord. Life has brought her to her knees. And from that place, we find her in the gospels, just reaching out to Jesus. Same picture with Jairus, you know, uh, we don't have, uh, Tiso doesn't do, do a painting of the beginning of the passage, but we find Jairus here in the left, uh, in the bottom left corner on his knees, amazed at what Jesus is doing. Uh, but we know that the story starts with Jairus, this great man of honor and great means, falling to his knees, begging Jesus, begging Jesus, please help me. However, we find ourselves looking to God for the help that we need, that is the place we need to be. And when we see, and I think it's such a grace to see, I think we almost need to hear this again and again. How does Jesus respond when people come to him seeking prayer and help? In Jairus's case, it's, you know, please, Jesus, come to, you know, come, just lay your hands on my daughter. You can heal her. I know you can. Please, Jesus, come. And how does Jesus respond to this man um, who's, who's putting himself before Jesus? He says, okay, let's go. A very simple okay. Now, as the story goes, and we're not going to spend too much time on this, but we know that it's not a straight line. And it's not even on his timing. Um, we learn something as well about the timing of Jesus. Uh, but that's a whole other sermon. But we, what we see here is, when the great and the mighty need Jesus, he answers prayer. And when the, when the downtrodden need Jesus, he answers prayer. And so the story goes, she just wanted to like hide away, just very quietly, just touch, and she was healed. She could feel it, and she just tried to sneak away. And of course, Jesus, being Jesus, um, you know, that's what she wanted. That's what she thought that was going to be enough, and that's okay. I just need a touch, just a little bit of power. I don't even want to bother him. But Jesus would have none of that. And so, as the scripture tells us, in the crowd, surrounded by a crowd, his disciples are like, Jesus, what are you talking about? Who touched you? Everyone's touching you, Jesus. What do you mean? And there's incredible grace here. Because Jesus would have none of this, like, anonymous, I'm just here for a little bit of healing, and I kind of want to bother you. Jesus stops everything. So that the person who reached out in faith wouldn't just receive healing, physical healing, but receive an incredible blessing as well. So Jesus looked around to see who touched, uh, who had done it. And then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, she was healed. She came and fell at his feet. Again, she's on her knees and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. I really believe that you could help me. I didn't want to bother you. I just wanted a touch. I know you could do it. I know you're busy. I didn't want to get in the way. You're helping someone, obviously, right? And Jesus' response to this sort of presence in prayer is he looks at her and says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. She would have settled for so much less, but Jesus puts her in a position to be seen and known by God himself. Jesus puts her in a position to have her faith and her, her trust and her confidence that Jesus can help her to have it affirmed, to be lifted up before all people, to say that she is not unclean or sick, but she is a daughter beloved by God who has incredible faith. He blesses her to go in peace. He did nothing wrong. Stand up tall. Go in peace. What a blessing. What a blessing. 
you know, I don't know how many of us feel like that's, this is how Jesus is going to respond when we come to him on our knees in prayer. But we're shown such grace and gentle, uh, gentle love and power from the Lord. Uh, I, I, I think about, um, there's a story in the Old Testament in Second Chronicles, where the temple was finished, and they, the, 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 the first temple, this glorious building to the work, glory and, and uh, worship of the Lord, it's built and it's completed, and they've worshiped, and after all this work and worship is given, um, the Lord appears to Solomon in the night and says these words. You may know it. I, I'm sorry, I don't have it on screen, but this is what it says. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. I don't know about you, um, but I know that there are some things in this world that only God can do. He is the one who will hear me wherever I am. He's the one who forgives me and I need forgiveness. And he's the one who heals and I need healing. And all of this comes as we turn to him with humility and pray not for his things or his blessings, but for him. This picture of people coming to pray to God on their knees is this picture of humble prayer. Can you see it? People coming to the Lord humbly, just with humble dependence, like, I need you, God. And it's so hard to say, I need you sometimes, but life will drive us to the place where we have to say it. And for the disciples, we need to say it. We need to go take that next step and say what we know we need. Do you remember, um, you know, whether you're young or you're older, the, the movie, The Karate Kid, right? Whether it's the original or the, 20, uh, the, the remake that came out in the 2000s. Um, both are fantastic. I love both. I love, in fact, any sort of movie that you know, that has that device where you're like, you do this training, wax on, wax off, paint on, you know, all these things, you know, take jacket, put it down, put it on, take it off, you know, all these things. Um, I love movies that where people are like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And then they learn, oh, my body is learning. This isn't a waste of time, but in fact, I'm really learning karate or kung fu. I'm learning something. My body is helping me learn something before I fully get it. Their body leads them in their training and their learning. And I think when it comes to our discipleship with God, when it comes to prayer, we just need to remember that we are whole beings. We have minds and we have hearts. We have a spirit and we have a body. And these people on their knees, they're able to see the world in a way that only being on your knees can show you. And the people who are praying on their knees are praying in a way that only being on their knees can get them to, to, um, to say and to come before God in that way. Our bodies are made to help us worship God. And so for the disciples of God, uh, maybe an encouragement for us, a challenge, an invitation. I don't know how often you pray on your knees. But this is such a wonderful, like it is in scripture, it's a wonderful way for God's people to come and to show, to express what we believe. We need God. And being on your knees helps you to outwardly express what we inwardly believe. I need him. I need you, God. And I know it's in this insistence, staying on your knees like these people, we, Jairus and the woman. It's this insistence of God. I know you can. And I need you to, Lord, would you come? Sometimes we don't have the words for that, but our bodies can help us to pray that. Secondly, um, Jesus, we see this scene as he's at the end here and he's at Jairus's house and he's dismissed everyone. And he has just a few of his disciples 
the parents of the young girl and he goes up and with a simple word and with the touch of her hand, he says, oops, that's not it. Jesus took her by the hand and spoke to her, little one, get up. What an incredibly appropriate, gentle expression of power. What great care, right? Like Jesus got great bedside manner. He knows how to be with kids, right? He's like, just come, bring them to me. So gentle, but I love how he just takes her by the hand. And, you know, typically in a sermon, I would have stopped at the knees, but I did want to point out the hands and how Jesus is so gentle with this little one. Um, kind of can't help but think about uh, what's been happening in our nation with our indigenous communities and the experience of little ones in residential schools. People who were Christians and in the name of Jesus was seeking to, you know, in a really uh, Eurocentric or, or colonialistic sort of manner, just imparting and imposing faith on these little ones, on these communities. And we might want to say, that wasn't us. Like, that is horrible. It wasn't us. And how do we respond as a church? Like the rest of the nation, we say, I am so sorry for your loss. And this is horrible. What happened in the schools, that is not the Jesus we know. That's not the Jesus of Scripture. The Jesus of Scripture would be the ones who gently hold their hands and guide them into life. It's heartbreaking to kind of see the difference of what we see in scripture here and what happened. And on our knees, we pray um, for healing. On our knees, humbly, we pray that um, God would lead us out of a horrible history to a place where people would A, know the right history. And also our work these days is not to be defensive about the church. We don't need to defend the church. God will defend the church. He always has. But what you need to do is bear witness to Christ who is gentle and loving and good. And so we pray. We pray for our indigenous communities, our, our indigenous brothers and sisters, because we know God loves them. And we hope that through the work of reconciliation and of learning and of speaking and of hearing their stories, in some way, the church of Christ today would be able to bear witness to our gentle one, to our gentle Lord, who will hold us by the hand and lead us into life. So church for us today, you know, just a simple encouragement. When life has brought you low, don't be so quick to just pick yourself up by the bootstraps and prove that you have resilience and you got grit. Our true strength and our true glory comes from God. Remember Jesus in one of uh, his other teachings in a parable, he says, the one who exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The way of the kingdom is that Jesus is the one who will lift us up. If life has brought us low, disciples know that it's the Lord who will lift us up. May you have grace to, to truly trust that and believe it. You know, it's, it's almost that, that crazy line in the middle of the passage where Jesus says, don't listen to what everyone else is saying. People are saying like, what's the use? Why bother Jesus? Don't, you know, leave him alone. And what does he say? He says, don't listen to them. Don't be afraid. Just trust me. Trust me. Trust is that outward and active expression of belief. It's the same word in Greek. Belief, trust, faith, confidence. It's all the same idea, same word. So what do we believe about him? This passage tells us that he cares and he listens to our prayers. He will help us in surprising ways, in amazing ways. This passage tells us that he will go with us. He's with us. 
And this passage tells us that he's not late. And he's not, you know, you know, like this is not malpracticed by Jesus. He's where he needs to be. And he's loving us. We believe these things here. Disciples of Jesus are called to trust him in the way we live. So what might that look for you today? I know you believe in Jesus. You're here worshiping him. But what does trusting him look like for you today? When you hear Jesus say, don't be afraid, just believe. This is not flippant. This is salvation. So how can we trust him? Just go back to that first encouragement as we close here. Pray on your knees if you're able to. Often we, we're sitting right now, right? We're sitting um, and we're listening to the word of God and that's an active mode. But when we pray, can we let our bodies help us to pray and lead us in our dependence of God? I think our bodies can say something far more than just our words. And so listen, I, I'm going to not say like, go try this this week. You're at home. You're in your room. You're in a place with the rug nearby. If you want to turn off your camera, feel free to do that. But as Nate comes and he's going to lead us into praise, I'm going to ask you to take a moment to respond on your knees. If you're able to, get on your knees and look and trust the one who's with you, who you need and who's good to meet you there. So I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna invite you to take a knee wherever you are uh, and we'll respond to the Lord uh, from that place. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and your presence with us. We thank you that you're moving in ways that we don't fully understand, but we're encouraged and we're called to believe are always good. Would you be with us today and help us to trust you and depend on you in the ways that we can, that the sons and daughters of God are able to depend on the Lord Almighty. Teach us to pray, God. We thank you for our bodies that can help us to pray as well. Holy Spirit, would you make us humble? Humble and present. And when we don't know what to do, may our eyes always be set on you. Lord, help us to see what the world looks like in humble dependence when we are on our knees and you're with us. Church, take a moment just to, just to pray in that way and they will lead us in, in praise. Let's continue to worship. Um, let us respond with a song of praise. I am 
a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb You have chosen me Love has called my name And I've been born again Into your family Your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God You split the sea split the sea so I could walk right through it my fears were drowned in perfect love you rescued me so I could stand and say I am a child of God you split the sea so I could walk right through it My fears were drowned in perfect love You rescued me so I could stand and sing I am a child of God Oh, I'm no I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God 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 Thank you for that truth, Lord, that uh, we declare and we just take hold of that truth that through Christ, we are sons and daughters. And we delight that you see us. You just want to give us stuff. You want to give us yourself. And thank you that we have you. And so for all of us today, as your sons and daughters and, in, and as disciples, the Lord most high. May we trust ourselves, trust you, trust you enough that when we are on our knees, we will pray to the one who hears. May we trust you enough and look for you that you might exalt us, that you would help us to stand and sing, that we are free and we are yours 
and you send us to bear witness to the goodness and the gentle, strong love of Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, friends, it is so good to worship with you. May you go in peace, trusting that the one who forgives you and who loves you, he'll make you well. So have a wonderful week. You can stick around. We're going to have fellowship following service today.